So there is no doubt that there has been many, many, many different denims or jean styles that men have gone through in streetwear from the early 2000s all the way up until 2020. And yeah, guess what? Today it's your luck. We're gonna talk about all the cringiest past styles that you went through from those times till now. It's your boy Keezy. It ain't easy being Keezy. Let's get it. And for the first one before the 2000s, in the 90s, very quickly, has got to be the Jinko jeans. Yeah, Jinko jeans. Jinko jeans were really popular. <laughs> Everybody had a pair of Jinko jeans. And I think the reason so many people had Jinkos, before we even talk about the style of this pants, is that it was very affordable. But on top of being cheap, it was also in style. And the particular style is exactly what you're seeing right here. Now this image isn't necessarily the baggiest look. This is more so the aesthetic and the sizing that most people wore. But the exaggerated Jinkos are these ones. Yeah. Yeah, people actually wore this stuff. 90s baggy was definitely way baggier than the 2000s baggy. I mean, they were, both of them were pretty baggy, but this set the mark, and this was very popular. Uh, you know, granted, though, kids at school didn't wear it, but you know, those, you know those people that go to the raves and they stomp on the ground really hard? I don't know what that style of music is called necessarily besides rave music, I guess, but it was very popular. They wore it, they danced in it. It is what it is. Let's move on to the 2000s. So as we move into the 2000s, so roughly the years of like 2000 all the way up until 2005, you would have brands like FUBU, Academics, State Property, LRG, Polo, Nautica was kind of popping during the time, I guess, and also brands like Rockerwear, right? And these kind of roared all throughout those five years. But a lot of these brands uh, started to put their own logos on the denim, and this might have been the first time we started seeing it for this era, and I kind of deem this era, I know a lot of people don't like using this word. George, if you're watching this, we had a whole conversation on this already. A lot of people don't like to call it the urban era, but I don't know what else to call it. That's what it is, and these are some of the brands that a lot of people wore, and it was pretty baggy. You would buy like a size 32, when really the pants fit like a 34, 36. You know, they're huge, huge pants. From these five years, from the 2000s to the 2005s, you are now embarking from the 2005 to 2007 era. I don't go to 2010 because a lot of things had happened, but within those years, a lot of the consumer base was getting introduced to things like Bape, Ivisu, Ed Hardy, Jerbode, Red Monkey, and a lot of these brands actually brought a lot more flavor to the table when it came to menswear, streetwear of the time. And if I were to just reflect a little bit on my uh, experience during those years, growing up is that a lot of these brands was the pure introduction to Japanese raw denim, right? I mean, you talk about the Visus and the Red Monkey, that's exactly what that was. And at this point is when Ivisu really hit a mass scale. It was on, it was everywhere around the globe. And any young teenager that was a guy, particularly, um, that was into this culture of, of wearing things to look fly and look cool, uh, would gravitate towards brands like Ivisu, and they were highly, highly replicated uh, during the era. And also what the biggest difference is, before I move on to the next section, is that the main focus for your fit during the time was your pants. Sometimes you can have a better looking pair of pants, whether it's Jabot's or something like that, than your sneakers. And it, you know, in today's times, in a very small comparison, is like people focus so much on the shoes that sometimes they don't care about the rest of the fit. Sometimes, right, or vice versa. But this era was like, man, once you got the pants, the rest is like, you can figure out the rest. You can figure out the rest somehow. But if you got the pants down, pants are going crazy. We are on the way. So I would say 2005 to 2007 is an interesting time uh, for Japanese raw denim. If you think about it, Japanese raw denim never left. And even the original Osaka 5 is still around today and you can buy from those brands, Studio the Artisan and stuff like that. And the reason why I'm saying that the lines kind of got blurred during this era, if we talk about 2007, 2008, going into 2009, this is right before the Jerkin era, the Swag Boy era. So this is pre-streetwear, right? This is, people probably didn't even know the term streetwear yet. Hypebeast wasn't a thing 
quite yet other than the fact that people were buying BAPE and BAPE was just getting introduced like the 2006 years. So with buying a lot of this raw denim, a lot of you know these people would end up uh, buying into a lot of Jordans. Bulls hoodies and the Bulls sweaters with the Bulls hat and matching head to toe. And this is again, like I've explained in a different video, this is the pre hype beast era. This kind of graduated in these types of pants right here. These are khakis. They almost look like Target employee pants. And I think where the blend was, was that after people started wearing the whole raw denim thing, they might've gotten tired of it. They moved on to skinny jeans. And then after the skinny jean thing was kind of in for the moment, then a lot of them would start wearing the khaki stuff with the Bulls jerseys and the Jordan 4s and the Cement 3s and stuff. And that was popular for a long time. That was popular for maybe three or four years. So at this point, we're already jumping into the 2010s, right? The 2010s, kind of going up to 2014, 2015, skinny jeans was just popular. Everybody had a pair of skinny jeans and they just got skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And some people would wear slim sometimes. And this is where a lot of companies started introducing the stretch denim and the stretch denim became popular. But at this moment in time from 2010 up until 2015, people really just didn't gravitate towards raw denim anymore. But when we talk about this era, there's a little bit of a mix um, of different uh, styles that were kind of brewing during the time. But I'm not 100% sure, but I think that Balmain ended up dropping those uh, biker pants, right? the biker denim and every celebrity was wearing it, uh, just almost every celebrity. So it became so popular that all of the fast fashion companies started making them and replicating them. And you would find that everywhere. So this was the transition of skinny jeans to the Balmain biker look. And then the Balmain biker look turned into the jogger look. Then the joggers came in the picture and it would come to a point where the joggers would have the biker thing on them too. I mean, I felt guilty of that. I had a pair of those. I didn't have two, I had one. I did wear them too, regrettedly. But that was also popular, right? So joggers came in the game and everybody was wearing joggers for a while. But as we move on, and I'm probably skipping through some styles that might've been from the 2010s to 2015, but 2015 now had birthed a whole new generation of different types of styles that were, were coming about. But the most notable and the most popular was obviously the fog grunge punk aesthetic that came in the game, right? He made those pants with those giant holes in them. Again, celebrity endorsement. Again, celebrity backing to it. Justin Bieber, Kanye West, Kevin Hart. Like who didn't have these pants? And it became so popular that what did the fast fashion companies do too? All of them started to make pants that were skinny, a skinnier, and they had huge holes in them, blowout knees. So those pants became popular for a long, long, long time. And I think we're on the fade out of those pants right now. I've already talked about that in a previous video. Speaking of crossovers, the crossover here from, the, from 2015 to maybe 2017, 2018 would be the skinny denim and then brands like Lakenzi, brands like Minimal and all these fast fashion brands that were coming out, H&M and Zara and stuff. They would start making all of these pants with the blowout knee and the stripes on the side. And I'm not sure who brought that into the picture first. Maybe is a possibility that was Fear of God that brought that in with those like, you know, Bruce Lee looking sweatpants. Then everyone thought it was a good idea to put stripes on all of their denim. And a lot of people wore that for a while. Another look that I don't necessarily see right now in 2020, but we'll get there in a second. So I know I'm fast forwarding a little here, but as we go into 2017, we go into 2018. Now is the, is the birth of all of this influence and all of the Travis Scott boys coming in and copying everything that Travis Scott does, right? Travis Scott wears cargos. Well, what do you do? You wear cargos. Travis Scott wears dunks. What do you do? you wear dunks. So since his influence had gotten so big from 2017 to 2018, all the followers followed along with it. So the focus of denim was still there, but it started to float into wearing cargo pants and everybody wearing cargo pants. Then Stone Island came in the picture. 
and so many other brands just started to make cargos. Everybody was making cargos. I mean, I'm speaking about this as if it was 10 years ago when really it was only two years ago that this whole cargo craze had came about. But 2017, 18, 19, how can we talk about this era without talking about Amiri, right? Amiri denim, very similar to kind of like that blown out uh, fog aesthetic, kind of, but they don't necessarily do it the same way. But they perpetuated and still influence a lot of people to wear really skinny pants. And of course, all the rappers still love this look. They still do. Like when the rappers were talking about the Ivisu back then, it's the same way that Amiri is being talked about in rap songs today. So you can only imagine how many people either are still wearing it uh, or have worn it from the 2017 to 2019 era. Okay, so um, before I explain this last part, and of course this year being 2020, so we're already talking about present times. But before I talk about what is, I guess, trending right now for streetwear, as time keeps progressing, the trends, for whatever reason, maybe because of Instagram, the internet, they just start happening faster. And instead of five year increments of trends of certain styles coming in and out, we now have two year trends. After the two year trend, we now have one year trend. I can kind of say that last year's style, even though we're not done with 2020 yet, is already pretty different than what we're seeing in 2020. And now what we're seeing for denim, for pants, as far as style goes for streetwear, is that it's coming back around in a cycle. And instead of getting skinnier, people's pants are either getting straighter or people's pants are either getting wider. Because a lot of people are now adopting the looks of the 90s and of the early 2000s and bringing it back as if it is hot news when really those are just 2000s looks so these recycled fits are bringing in you know people that are really into vintage and they're buying a ton of vintage levi's which are either 501 straight fitting pants some people within 2019 or within 2020 have gravitated toward cropped pants since there's so many people now that are gravitating towards the vintage levi's people are now gravitating towards vintage carhartt Carhartt and remade workwear have now been one of the hottest trending things over any other type of pants. And when I say remade Carhartt, I really mean remade Carhartt. People are now taking Carhartt pants and flaring the bottom. And I don't mean to cut this video short, but I think that is where we're at right now. It seems as if this DIY remade workwear look has been more prominent than anything that I am seeing online compared to any style. It is pretty much trumping any aesthetic when it comes to denim. Of course, there's different types of pants that are out there that are gaining a lot of popularity compared to certain denim things, but we're talking more primarily about, you know, denim pants, so to speak, on this video. Okay, so by closing this video, I tried to explain this as best as I could. It was hard to pick up every single style along the way and talk about each one along the way without making this video too lengthy. And I hope that this was enjoyable. And if you can, comment below and let me know which styles I forgot about that were really popular that I should have mentioned throughout the timeline of this video. So, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys and girls keep it locked from clothing, music, to culture. It is your boy Keezy, and I'm out. Peace. You wanna do, and it's just gonna take a minute, but it's gonna work out. Like, like, if you try to cut corners and you put f***ing costumes on and do shit, yeah, you just, you gonna get straight, but at what cost, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And how you feel. When you do this sh for you, 100% for you, you can grind and stay up for five or six days and not really be tired because it's for you, you.